Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. That is Jack. I am Conrad, and this is the 45. Uh, we are looking at some of the marquee matchups from uh, week 23, mainly the Liverpool United, as well as the insanity that was City and Palace, along with some of the other upsets that took place. All around. Exactly. I feel like for the City Palace game in specific, the second both of us put our eyes on it, the game just came to life. It was, it was <laughs> 1 0 until the 80th minute, and I think both of us kind of on our separate areas both tuned in, and then at the exact same time, it came alive. Knowing that we were going to bring Exa- the goals exactly, to City. Exactly, yeah. City brought that match alive and nearly nearly won it, but then Zaha forced an error into Fernandinho. And that was a big result for, for both, for, for Palace, and big and negative result for City. Now, the, the Palace needed that, I think. We'll get to it in a second here. Let's take a quick look at the table. We did not do a review of twenty of Week 22, where I did go 3-0, Proud. which Proud. is pretty spectacular. Back above 500 on the year. Jack remains above 500 with a 2-1 that weekend. But we will start with Liverpool and United at Anfield, a very lively and loud Anfield. Everybody knows the mm-hmm. history between these two teams. They don't like one another. Uh, started lively. Van Dyke with the header in the 14th minute or thereabouts. Firmino uh, ruled out after uh, foul ruled on Van Dyke leading up to the goal. Pereira couldn't convert. Martial couldn't convert. Um, and then, you know, late on Liverpool, late, late, late on in the 94th, uh, Salah getting his first mm-hmm. goal against United uh, to complete the 2 0 for the home side not really a surprise this match could have been 5-3 either Mm -hmm. way there was so much action and just just poor poor finishing i I think also the story was goalkeepers for both teams i think de gea made more individually really positive saves uh for for manchester united and and in a lot of ways they couldn't get out of their own way because martial obviously the miss that it caused his reaction from gary neville uh was egregious honestly he was in the box had a lot of space should have put that one home didn't and you could have said that with you could have just copy pasted almost any Manchester United or Liverpool player in that space should have done better with that chance um, because there were so many of them it was such an open game which you don't see in the past couple of these fixtures between Liverpool and Manchester United but they did and they showcased that openness and it really made a great game and at the end of the day Liverpool had a really really good defense and made it hard for United to finish their chances and they didn't have the talent in the end in the final third to, to capitalize and Liverpool in the end stayed defensively dominant. Strange side picked by Solskjaer mm-hmm. for this match. Rashford out. Sounds like now two to three and months. And what's interesting is uh, he furthered the back yeah, injury. It seemed he like had. he was going to have a chance to play in this game, uh, at least after that, that match in the midweek against Wolves, and then turns around and they realize actually he's going to be gone for possibly a long time with a back injury and a foot injury. So hope for the best for him. Two fractures exactly. in his exactly. back. He went from one fracture in his back to two as a result of that Wolves uh, match. It was... It was do you have to question whether he was he shouldn't have been playing? I think it was I think it was I a freak think. accident. It, it showcases the issue for United, which is a lack of depth and a lack and a, too much reliance on their individual star players. They didn't have Pogba and Rashford today, and it showed because they couldn't create anything and they had no finishing product. Because Rashford is ultimately, whenever Pogba is not there, far and away their best player in my eyes. And without him and Pogba, your two best players, you take away any team's two best players, and they're instantly going to struggle. Yeah. And it showcased for United because they well could played. not get the final final product to show up. And I think Solskjaer, after the match, got a bit of stick from United fans for saying that they had a good performance. And I think that they actually did. They actually showcased a, a, against the league leaders and the best team in the world right now. They showed a lot of promise. And they were able to hold their own. And if they just had maybe one or two of their, their key men back, could have been actually, honestly, a different result. You would not have been surprised to see that. No, I, I, I agree. United always play Liverpool tough. This is the first time Liverpool's beaten them in the last 11 exactly. matches. Premier exactly. League matches, which is a that's, a that's a long stretch. But again, Liverpool were messy on, on finishing as well. Mane had clear-cut chances. Uh, Salah had a number of clear-cut chances. Henderson channeled his inner Gerrard and nearly scored that belter from mm-hmm. range. That thing just was... I mean, De Gea got a hand on it. Otherwise, that's exactly. in the corner. Um, but just just not over, not a very neat game for either of them, but Liverpool continued to grind it out. Becker with the assist and first one down there to congratulate Salah, which is one of the funniest things I've seen. But this is an insane number. He's got more clean sheets than goals conceded since he's arrived at That's Liverpool. That's incredible 28 stat. clean sheets, 27 goals yeah. conceded. He is years. best keeper in the world, I think, is 
I think it's there's an argument to be had, but it also showcases just the talent Liverpool have in defense. I mean, Gomez, Van Dijk is a phenomenal center back pairing, and I think Robertson and Trent Alexander Arnold are always praised for their attacking ability. They don't get enough credit for the good work that they do at the back. They're not elite in that position, but they are good and they create a phenomenal unit which is right now the best statistically in the Premier League and with Allison in, the, in between the sticks, it's it's impenetrable at some times. On that note, you're looking back at some of the more memorable Premier League winners in the past, including last year's you know, 100-point team for City, the Invincibles from 0405, as well as United's treble winning side, how many points they each had at 22 games. Uh, that's an insane number. City, 62, mm-hmm. which was a record at mm-hmm. the time. And Liverpool remain the number one team in all of Europe after it's 22 an, It's an incredible stat. And for every win they get, that stat continues to improve and improve. they got a couple of difficult matches coming up for them uh, against Wolves and West Ham, which aren't going to be easy matches for them. But they'll go into this knowing that they've literally beat every team in the Premier League now this season. And it's they're going to have a lot of confidence. And I think that they're going to be looking at that and saying, yeah, I mean, look at the stats on the screen. It's remarkable what they do. And I think that they'll have a lot of confidence and they'll feel really good about where they're at right now. The only thing they're not winning in right now is total goals scored. United up a handful because of this nine goals they put past yeah. Southampton and six goals they put past yeah. Villa last week. Otherwise, it's yeah, a wash City have, between have, those two had clubs. a lot of really dominant attacking performances. Um, and that's what is keeping them afloat. And it just makes you wonder, because the Laporte injury was huge for them, and it showcased in the match we're about to, to look back on as well that not having one of your key center backs really can just throw a, 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 just make your entire side worse because you have to shift a lot of things. And you question, I think Laporte is not the level of Van Dyke, but his importance to that team is very similar. So if Liverpool lost Van Dyke, there would be similar levels of dis- disordenedness in the defense and overall team. I do think Liverpool have a little bit more mm-hmm. depth than as well. Also, they've had a lot more injuries. Yeah. City have. And City have had more key injuries. Point but Liverpool have had a lot yeah. of just just their depth has been ruined by injuries. Moving on to that City and Palace match, although we did not say so. As you mentioned, Liverpool obviously sixteen points clear mm-hmm. on sixty four points yes. now. Uh, next against Wolves this week. United uh, home to Burnley this week. They are fifth with 34 points. We'll talk about the table in a little bit. But that City Palace match was pretty nuts. It was 1-0 until about eight minutes to go, which was when we both switched over to the match. And I didn't say it at the time. Maybe I said it aloud. There was nobody else listening. Um, they're gonna. This is going to bring the goals for City. It's a mortal lock that that's what's going to happen. And within a minute, Aguero got the equalizer, and then a few minutes later, in the 87th or 88th, uh, Mendy's cross comes in and he heads it in to go mm-hmm. ahead. Uh, but then, to your, you mentioned it earlier, Zaha comes down in the 94th minute with the cross that the 35-year-old center back from central yeah. midfield turned. <laughs> uh, I felt bad for Fernandinho on that one. Uh, own goal to deny them the full three. And that is big, I think, ultimately in the context for both of these teams because Palace – continue to be a team that just kind of is very underrated in a lot of ways. Um, they have a lot of good talent. Zaha stayed after having severe speculation for several consecutive years. He's staying. He's stayed, and he's showcased that he has a lot of talent. Um, and ultimately, I think that City will be frustrated that they, even, even with the lack of talent that they have due to injuries, they got to close out results better. And Guardiola will, will have to hit that point home with his team that you, you can't allow them to be making that run. He said after the match, Zaha cannot make that run that late on in the match. you just you got to just pull all of your energy to just keep them out for that last bit. And they weren't able to do that. And you think about it, 12 months ago, that city side, I think, would have won that match from 2-1 up, even with Fernandinho at center back. I think it's just a change in the mentality almost. And it, there is, I think, a need for some serious upheaval in that city squad um and so as of now i think that they are pretty locked in at second place i think liverpool are feeling very 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 confident with where they're at and that's a result of just 16 points exactly. 16 points is yeah. ridiculous 16 points game in hand ridiculous 19 points they it's going to be any, they, they if they beat mm-hmm. hammers they're going to be it's going to be some record-setting results from liverpool and for city i think 
it's going to be a frustrating year because, I mean, as you see right here, Aguero says that they need to make a big, big change. Um, that would be game-breaking. That that would change the footballing landscape if if that move ended up happening. But I, It feels like Aguero is, and I don't know how to, this is insane to sound to say, that is he underrated at City? I mean, he's the all-time leading foreign goal scorer, beating Thierry Henry's he record just last he weekend. Did. And... But he goes, he's not talked about. And I about. think it's fascinating to look at because some players get some crazy hype for them. And some players... Harry Kane. English, English players. players. I mean, look at probably two main examples, Marcus Rashford and Tammy Abraham. Both are really, really good players. Both English, both having great seasons. And the way you talk about them, they're having once-in-a-lifetime seasons. But Aguero isn't being talked about that much because he set the standard so high for himself. And he is one of those impressive players for City that I hope stays around if they do try and make a, a serious shift in overall team dynamic and team culture because I don't know if Lionel Messi is going to be making the move over to uh, to Manchester, but that would be a pretty dynamic shift in the, the, the overall landscape. Because if you think if Messi on the City side, would it would be scary for any Premier League team to go up against. Oh, he would destroy it. And I think Aguero similarly would slice La Liga to pieces. Oh, yeah. The, those of them are phenomenally talented players, and they just... I don't want to say Messi's underrated, but they both... Sometimes you can overlook the amount of talent that they have because of the consistency that they, that they display. Um, and for City, it's just... They're lacking that world-class talent in some positions. And for Liverpool, every time they put out a side, it looks like they are almost perfect in every single position as an overall unit and that's just a, a result of a lot of really good work a lot of really good depth and i think city need to work on that themselves transfer business in other news uh <laughs> the palace have announced megan and harry have renounced their titles meanwhile palace have announced man city have renounced theirs very i don't see a way back for for city in this i mean it's it's we're january 20th or whatever it is yeah. 19th Liverpool, and that's insane Liverpool, to say are not prone, or are very prone, I should say, to blowing leads uh, in the Premier League in specific. And But this just feels like it's almost too much because they've only failed to win in one game this season out of 22, which is a ridiculous feat. It's more points... Yeah, they've confined all their losing to the, to the competitions, exactly, yeah. the non-league exactly, competitions. Yeah. They've got more points at this point in the season than any of European top five leagues in history, which you look at that... And that's in, incredible how many points they've been able to amass. And to think that they'd have to... Dr- in a league that is as difficult exactly. as... Exactly. The they'd have to, to, to drop points in six matches and City would have to win out. It's not impossible, but it's so hard to, it's so no. hard to envision a reality where that happens. Very difficult. Agree. Moving on to a few of the other matches before we take a look at the table. Uh, upsets, we say this with a question mark. Uh, as Troll Football points out, they have upsets in the Premier League. City, as we talked, mm-hmm. drew with Palace. Chelsea losing to Newcastle. Uh, Spurs draw uh, home to mm-hmm. Watford. And uh, then Sheffield United draw against <laughs> Arsenal. United ahead of Arsenal in the table, uh, inexplicably. Yeah. And Arsenal being Arsenal. Uh, it's hard to s- I don't know what to. I don't know what's an upset anymore in this year's Premier League. Maybe Liverpool Exactly. Losing. That would probably be the only serious upset. And maybe City losing to maybe Watford after beating them 8-0 in their first game. That would probably be another upset of similar proportions. But you look at those, and I think Arsenal, the only thing that's saving them from being a, a, a categorized as an upset for Sheffield United uh, would be that it was at the Emirates. And that means that Arsenal probably were slightly favored. Um, and that means that it, although they are in a very poor state right now, I think that they are not as far off as some people will have you think and at least in my view take obama yang out of that oh. side though that's what happens exactly right they can, i mean he's their production yeah. you got him he's lost for another two exactly. matches the, the suspension is really going to hurt them and as we're going to mention in the table it's going to be huge for trying to be able to catch up and get back into the swing of things in order to get yourself back in on the table burnley bit of a burnley win yeah. over leicester uh leicester kind of returning to to earth yeah. a little bit uh, I won't say the shine is off them. I still think they're a very, very good club. Um, but are they going to stick around at the top exactly. four? They've already slowed know. down you know, a bit. Look at their the... overall team. Is just, has, they've gotten into a bit of a rough patch. I don't think that they should go crazy, especially after City or Chelsea losing as well. Um, their goal should be top four. And I think it's very, very 
ambitious to try and do that this season, but they still are in a position to do it, and they have the talent to do it. So they should try and just steady the ship in this very, very difficult period. Uh, December, January, February are where seasons can get ruined. And if you're able to keep yourself at least afloat at that point, you can begin to try and shoot upwards again as you get into the later parts of the season. Watford bouncing hard off mm-hmm. the bottom. They're out of the relegation zone. I believe. Now, it's crazy uh, thing about we called them the worst team in the league a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago. And exactly, Atford. they were Atford for the longest time, and now they're they're showing a bit of life. And I guess it is Spurs. They love to take points off of getting two draws against them. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see how they try and move forward on this season as well. And Steve Bruce, I think, doing a really good job with that Newcastle side. He's getting production. Uh, defensively, they were very good against Chelsea. They didn't have a whole lot of possession, but they they got the smash and grab. Again, a 93rd, 94th minute winner. Uh, absolutely nuts ended. And to, a, to much to the chagrin of Frank Lampard. So let's take a look at the table here. Obviously, you've got Liverpool 16 clear of City. Um, then Leicester... Six points clear of Chelsea, so they're in decent position. Mm -hmm. Um, But the amazing thing is you just look at those top five, and there's 30-point difference from first to fifth. It's remarkable. Which is crazy. It's not normal. It should not be like that. And, (laughs) And that speaks to the overall parity of the league and the dominance of Liverpool. And people will claim against Liverpool, probably rival fans of the Pacific, will say that Liverpool's league title is less important because it's a le- it's a season where there's everyone seems to be bad or inconsistent this year and that's very accurate everyone is kind of in a, a, a an odd state where you don't really know where they lie except for Liverpool and that just there at the end of the day they have won 21 out of 22 games that doesn't come with anything except for the sheer talent that the team has and 30 points with a possible three more if they're able to win their game in hand is is unfathomable is the only way you could describe that well and going back to last year the only team that they lost to was city away right exactly i mean and they had a lot more draws where they did lose you know lose points but that's you're coming on a year and a half more a season and a half of where you've lost one mm-hmm. match so you can say what you want about that liverpool club this year look it back to what they did last year and if not for a record-setting performance from City, you're looking at a dominant two-year mm-hmm. run on the likes of which we've exactly. not seen. And people are beginning to come around to the fact that this is a once-in-a-lifetime team that is ridiculous with where they're at right now. And I think that overall the league is at a really healthy spot. People are saying that having a team who runs away with it is a bad thing. It's a really healthy spot with the exception of one team being very good. But you think about it, City are on the verge of getting right back into it. I think Chelsea are pretty close to getting back into it. I think United and Arsenal and Spurs are a couple right pieces away from getting back into top four contention and before they can go on further than that. Leicester, you don't know where they're going to be. And then obviously from 5th to 18th and even further below is even crazier. So we said 30 points, exactly. first to fifth. Then you have 12 points from the European spots to the championship spots, which is like <sighs> even nuttier. I don't know what's crazier, 30 points, one to five, or 12 points, five to It eight. just shows that we've talked about it so many times this year. We always bring up the gap that between five and 18th. We love, we love that stat. Uh, but we – the bi- It spread a little bit. It started out at like yeah, nine. And the, the thing that is I think most interesting about it is that – Aston Villa at the bottom will say that, look, we're not that far off of getting back into a really good f- finish this season if we can make some moves this window, if we can try and transform a couple of re- these results into our favor. And other teams will be afraid of what could happen if they slip off. Sheffield United, who are having a great season, a couple bad results for a couple weeks, and all of a sudden you're back to where maybe you thought you were going to be, even though you're having a, fly, a, a season where you're flying high. Same for Wolves. Same for Palace, probably. Arsenal will look at it, and Everton will look at it as positives. They're in 10th and 11th, but they're only a couple points away from 5th and above. So it just depends on these next couple of results that can really kind of transform the way the season looks out for the rest of the year. I mean, you look at there's 15 matches for most of these teams, save Liverpool mm-hmm. and Hammers. That's 45 possible mm-hmm. points, right? So is, you know, 40 points as long as considered mm-hmm. safety, right? Is that going to be enough? Know. Are there going to be more teams that actually get to 40? I mean, I haven't done the math that there's – obviously there's only so many teams that can mm-hmm. get to 40 based on how many points are available exactly. in total. But 
that seems forty points doesn't seem all that safe to me anymore. Yeah, and teams like Norwich and Bournemouth will have a lot of, a lot of fire under them to to get back into that pack because I mean I mean extended a little bit. Norwich are seventeen points off of fifth. It's a lot of points, but they're bottom of the league. <laughs> they're not the farthest away from what you would expect. If you had to predict how many points that difference would be, you would not be predicting 17, you'd be predicting a lot more. Because that's a team that's going to be in the second highest European competition, that's a team that's going to be the second highest English competition in the next season. So there's a huge disparity in there. But the league isn't really reflecting that in the point totals, which makes it just phenomenally uh, interesting to watch. Well, I think what's, what will be interesting to see with those those 13 through 16, right? West Ham, are we've talked about it, are probably too good to mm-hmm. stay there. Nigel Pearson working wonders mm-hmm. at Watford. Don't know how long that can last. Uh, but Southampton, Burnley, maybe not mm-hmm. Newcastle. I think Newcastle, with Steve Bruce's experience and the depth of talent that they have, the quality of that side. But those other sides, one or two key injuries and mm-hmm. you're done, right? And then that makes a... a, a an opportunity for a Bournemouth or a Villa yeah. to bounce and to exactly. move up. So I think it is going to be the tale of late mm-hmm. season injuries that are going to define that it's bottom half of that it's table. Be, it's going to come down to the finest of margins, and that's going to make it a really competitive area there. Maybe the league title will be a little bit of a not too much fun to watch towards the end of the season in terms of overall entertainment, but the overall league is going to be phenomenal. Those European spots are going to be exciting, to your point, and then that relegation battle or the stay-up battle is going to be fascinating as the season winds towards the end, the final 15 matches, 16 for two of the other clubs that are behind. Well, that'll do it for us uh, for Week 23 wrap-up. Please like, comment, subscribe. You can find us on the Twitter at The45 and all your other social channels. For Jack, Conrad, this has been The45. We appreciate it. Take care now.